Okay guys, uh, well, uh, first of all, I'm just an ordinary person who was born and raised in Russia. I'm a kid of the 90s, and, uh, well, the 90s were the period after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And uh, I remember that time to some extent, to the extent a schoolboy can remember, I guess. I went to school during that time, and, uh, well, when I was at home, I loved playing video games on my PlayStation. And, uh, well, when I was not in front of my TV, I was probably out playing hide and seek, something like that, with my friends who lived on the same street. And, uh, well, we had a lot of fun. But uh, getting back to video games, the thing is, back then in the 90s, all of them were in English. So uh, there were no Russian subtitles or nothing like that, let alone any voiceovers. Okay, so uh, I had to deal with English, and uh, the thing is, I wasn't irritated by it, far from it. I was amused by it, and uh, I played video games uh, with a dictionary at hand so that I could understand what was going on on the screen, <laughs> and I liked everything. And uh, this is how I got to know the English language, and uh, this is how I became interested in different cultures, especially in the U.S., in England, and uh, the West in general. Uh, being a kid, I firmly believe that Russia and the U.S. should be friends. And uh, here's, an interesting, here's an interesting thing, because uh, when it comes to my friends, they didn't really share my picture of the world, which I found stupid, by the way. Uh, strange as it may sound today but back then in the 90s the relationship between the two countries between russia and the u.s was on the rise and uh well only after the year 2000 the relationship between the two countries began to decline slowly and steadily and uh, well it's been completely shattered since the beginning of the invasion Sadly, I have to say that a big part of the Russian society has always seen the West, and especially the U.S., as an enemy. Well, on the other hand, of course, it has to do with the propaganda. And uh, on the other hand, obviously, it is one of the consequences of the Cold War. Uh, I want to tell you this. I once watched a really interesting interview on the Internet uh, an old one. As far as I remember, it was filmed in the 50s in England, where the renowned British philosopher and brilliant writer Bertrand Russell explains that one of the problems of the modern world is its inability to achieve economic equality. And uh, as a result, this inequality leads to hatred. Well, I agree with Russell, and uh, I'll tell you this, I think that well, in Russia, that's the case. At least, uh, inequality is one of the, you know, other sources of this hatred. For example, Moscow, the capital of Russia, it is considered a totally different state within the state. Okay, and <laughs> I'll tell you for sure that a lot of Russians, they really hate they love Moscow and uh, the Muscovites, okay, because of this inequality. Yes, there is a lot of inequality, and as a result, there is a lot of hatred in Russia, just between ordinary people, unfortunately. Uh, but again, in fact, uh, the quality of life in Russia, in general, has always been so-so, okay? even in big cities, even in Moscow, even in uh, St. Petersburg, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people, a lot of Russians still live in conditions far from good. And, uh, well, but on a bigger scale, for example, if we take a look at the Western countries, of course, the quality of life is much higher in the Western countries in comparison to Russia. And I'm not even talking about the US, and I think this is one of the reasons why a lot of Russians, you know, they feel hatred towards the West, okay, because of this inequality. Uh, 
I also think that another source of this hatred lies in patriotism and nationalism. Well, and to be honest, I never liked those things. Never liked those things at all. Uh, but here's an interesting thing. Uh, for example, in the past, when I was, for example, in a conversation with someone, with an ordinary person, and uh, I was critically minded, I was critical towards my government, towards my state, okay, towards my society, okay. Quite often I was asked something along the following lines. Why do you hate your motherland? Why do you hate your motherland so much? And, uh, well, to be honest, I've always been struck by such a question, because the way I see things, if someone considers himself a true patriot, I guess he should be first to look for all those different problems inside his society, his, you know, his government. So, just this is how it should be, this is how I think, okay? And I think it is just, uh, how are you supposed to fix a problem if you don't even look for them in the first place? I just don't get it. Okay, and I guess it is double absurd when someone, okay, tries to deny problems and someone accuses you of hatred, you know, kind of, you know, groundless hatred towards your government, when you identify problems lying on the surface, okay, which can be seen with the naked eye. So I just don't get it. It is absurd. And uh, like I said, I'm not a patriot in any form, and I've never been one. Uh, getting back to Russell, there is his uh, really famous quote where he says that humanity has become one family. Well, and uh, basically he says that if you want to become happy, one of the first things you have to do is you have to make sure that your neighbor is happy too. And, uh, well, I understand that such a statement may sound too idealistic, but by the way, uh, by neighbors, he meant countries. And uh, I do agree with Russell. And I think that uh, eventually, that's the only way for the world to achieve its happiness, okay? And uh, I think that's, we just have to, we have to realize that we are just earthlings, okay? And uh, fundamentally, we are the same. Even when it comes to human languages, for example, they sound different. But fundamentally, there's, there's only one logic. Linguists know it. Okay, so fundamentally, all human languages are the same. And there's even this... Uh, uh, there's a theory according to which there is so-called uh, universal grammar. And this universal grammar is shared by all human languages. And here's an interesting thing, because this universal grammar is an inborn attribute, according to the theory. And, uh, well, in other words, we're just, we're born with it, okay? In other words, the platonic world of ideas is accessible to all of us, philosophically speaking. I think that what the world needs is doubt. We have to doubt things more often. We have to doubt our beliefs. And by the way, getting back to propaganda, I think propaganda, first of all, I think it exists everywhere. And uh, the way I see things, whenever any politician, okay, any government, when they state something with absolute certainty, okay, most of the time it is a kind of propaganda. Uh, and this is how it can be spotted. Because when it comes to any propaganda, it never leaves any room for doubt, okay? It declares things with absolute certainty, but what we need is doubt. And I do believe that the world eventually will be able to emerge into a better place, but it will take time. There, I said it. Thank you guys for watching.